everybody. Today we're going to do the April painting project, which is flowers. And the surprise is for Birdie is that she's going to help me make the project each day step by step. And she's going to be in the videos with me helping to teach you. That's the surprise. So we're going to get started and we'll show you step by step. Okay, what you're going to get for the project is you're going to get your canvas, you're going to get a paper plate, and you're going to get five colors. You're going to get this size, um, five acrylic craft paint colors. And then I um, used what I had at home to substitute, um, but you're going to send me your picture that you want to paint, and I'm going to help you pick out the colors. You're going to all get a white, so you can mix that to make... Um, tints of all the colors so if you have your medium color you can make it a lighter blue um, and then if for your subject matter if you have these colors you can add the white to make it a lighter color and a, a tint of the color and then this is this is our background color we're gonna do a blue background and we're gonna mix in the white and then the next day we're gonna come back and we're gonna add our subject matter which is going to be the flower and this is the color of our flower and this is for our stems and our leaves. And then the third day when we come back, we're gonna add some details. So we're gonna do this slowly and build the painting because we're gonna let the colors dry because if we did blue background and we didn't let it dry and we put the orange on top, they would neutralize and your flower or your subject matter would become brown. So we have to do this in steps. So day one is the background. Day two is the subject matter, and then day three, we're gonna add the details. Okay, so I've got my white and my blue on my paper plate, and my canvas is ready. We're not using paint brushes for this project. That was the plan all along. Originally, we were gonna use gloves, but because those are needed for medical workers right now, we're scrapping that. We're just gonna use our fingers, and we're gonna wash when we're done. So just roll up your sleeves. If you want, put your hair back. Make sure you have If a, you have sleeves. If you have sleeves. Put an apron on to protect your clothes because this paint doesn't wash out. And you're just going to take your finger and you're going to dab it in the paint. And you're going to take your finger. And you're going to apply the paint using your finger. And then... After a while, you can put the paint on your other finger, you can dab some white, and you can mix them to add some dimension, change in color, change in texture. Okay, so we finished the first step. Birdie, what do you think? Uh, it looks good, by the way. Yours is more dotted, mine's is more but it has texture, Yeah. and we both used our hands. And it's really sticky and stinky. Yeah, the paint we used was, we found it, it was old paint, so it kind of smells like, what does it smell like? It smells like dirty, old puke. No, it smells like socks. That smells like puke. Okay. So yeah, that's so There's why. Birdie's texture. She did a good job. She finished. This is day one. Are you ready to take a break? No, it's time. It's, it's time to take a break, and we'll let it. No. And we'll let it dry, and then tomorrow, what are we gonna add to it? We're gonna add the texture. The flower. The flower on it, and the the flower is this. Yep, that's our that's our model, and here's. And that's the pot. That is, and here's. Yours. Mine, and I use my fingers, and I just did the dabbing. And Birdie did more of a spreading, but I stepped first. But it looks cool. Just step, yeah, let it dry. I dabbed first and then spoosh. yeah. And we didn't do the edges, so you don't have to do the edges. We kind of ran out of paint. We're sharing the little tube, so so we'll see you tomorrow. So bye. I want to do a quick video about our paint palette to show you how to get the most out of the colors you've been given.
This is our background color. This is the white to make tints and to blend. Then we have our flower color, our accent color, and our stems. And I talked about before, if you use complements like orange and blue, when they touch each other, they'll neutralize. So I put a little bit on my plate because the center of our flower is a neutral color. And I'm gonna try to create a neutral for that center with the complements. So I'm gonna take first the orange accent and the kind of the blue. And if you mix them together, it makes like a brown. So they neutralize. And you can use that color. Let me get it blended. You can use that neutral color for the stem center when you get there. So even though you don't have um, a brown in your palette or in your in your paint palette, you can mix the complements to make a neutral. So if you had a yellow and then a lavender, those would mix to make a neutral, or a red and a green, those would mix to make the neutral. So I just wanna show you that really quick before we get started. Okay, we're back for day two. Some things we did on day one that didn't work out, we did a time-lapse video mm -hmm. and we're not sharing it because it was really shaky, so we set the time-lapse video up better today. Um, all we did yesterday was paint our background. Um, well, you yeah. wanna... well, yesterday mommy didn't feel as good, so we didn't do this. No, but day one. But after yesterday, we did. Before yesterday. Yes. Okay, so now I feel better. So. The, the main thing with taking time between the days is that your background is completely dry before you add more to the canvas. Um, we're going to use colors that would neutralize each other and we're going to do that on purpose. We just don't want that to happen on accident. So the background has to be completely dry. Um, so, yeah. We will have a time-lapse video of us working today, hopefully. Samantha is, is going to help us. Yeah. Yeah. She mostly loves art with me. Mm-hmm. Great. This from the day before yesterday. It's completely dry, and this is our subject matter. So you can decide whether you want to do your picture. Um, you can, this is landscape, yeah. or you can turn it and, and do can, it more of a portrait. Like, you have to use one finger, but I use my whole entire fingers. You use your whole hand. Yeah. So That's I'm gonna have mine, I'm gonna put mine vertical. I'm gonna make it portrait because my subject matter is really thin and tall. So we're gonna get started and we're, I'm gonna use my finger and- I'm gonna use my finger. And that's, that's our painting tool for this project and we will start the- But make sure after you do it, you have, after you do it and before you do it, you wash your hands because the germs on it have to get off from everything. Okay. And they're gonna, your hands are gonna be very messy when you're done. Okay. So today is day three. Um, we're going to talk about what we both think of our project so far. This is the last day to work on it. Um, it's great taking breaks when you're working on a project and knowing when to take those breaks so you're happy with the result and you're not frustrated or overwhelmed or underwhelmed. So knowing when to take those breaks is important. Um, the other thing I thought about with doing the finger painting with the Impressionist inspiration is that they used a lot of paint. And so because we're using our hands, our fingers, we're not using as much paint to get the effect because our fingers aren't like brushes that absorb a lot of the paint and store a lot of it. And then we end up throwing it away because we clean the brushes. So we're using less paint by using our fingertips. So... 
What do you think about your picture? What, do you think you can add anything more to your picture? Well, I wanted to add the ground to it. Yeah? Make it like backgrounds. Mm-hmm. But since it's nighttime, I think I'm just like add like animals around it. Okay, but we only have the five colors, so you gotta use the five colors. Tell everybody what you put on the top of your picture. What's at the top? What is that? I put a moon uh -huh. and, and this is a butterfly. Mm -hmm. And what are the white dots? Those are the stars. Stars. So hers is a night scene. This is my picture. Um, what? Oh. This is my painting so far, and um, I need to decide the direction I want to stay because doing flowers they're radial. So when I finally put when I finally put the stems on, it'll kind of anchor them. So I still have until then to decide which direction I want to put my canvas. I'm going to add the the stems and the leaves, and I might add the pot we'll see but that's my finishing touches and then I'm cons I'm thinking about doing the the sides hey, Mom. if we have more blue paint left I over. like this way because like this stem could go to here this stem could go to like here and this stem could go like here yep what about this way that stem can go there that stem can go there yep but if we went this way uh-huh Because it would show behind the other flower. Or if it was in front of the flower, you could just go straight down. Okay. Yeah, the stem put it in front of the other leaf or the other petals. And then it kind of blends in. Yep. Okay. So we've got some work to do. I'm gonna do a time lapse video and we'll share we'll share our found them because they were like way too fast. We'll share our finished product and what we think of them and we're going to get to work. Bye. Bye. Okay, here's our finished product. Um, as you can see, I went back in and I took the leaves off the flowers. I felt like as, as big as these petals are and the direction that we're looking at them, it feels like they, they're towering or we're, we're laying down the grass looking up. So I wanted to get rid of all that, that in between and have really strong stems to hold the weight of the flower. Um, I ran out of my original blue, so I had to substitute and find a, a, a blue that was very close. So you can kind of see there's some changes in the blue, which is okay. I didn't I didn't have a lot of that blue to start with, but the consistency of the texture throughout the picture is what's creating that impressionist-like texture, which everything on here was from dabbing. So you get movement, texture, um, you don't have hard lines, if you're close to the picture, let's see, see that texture? And if you get closer, those, those soft brush strokes, sometimes they're aggressive, but just those brush strokes are what they were known for. So we have this uniform texture from doing the same technique throughout using our hands. I'm really happy with it. I went through and softened my flowers a little bit more, but it definitely has 
that Impressionism inspiration. And I might go back and talk more about um, how they color mixed with complements so close together to create their paintings, how they, you, they neutralized the colors, but then they still had pops of color next to it, kind of kind of like what we're seeing with the green, when you put the orange or the red on the green and it neutralizes, but then you have that vibrant solid color next to it, like that green right there in the middle. You got that solid green, but then you have the neutralizing and then you have the mixing. Um, there's another example, there's the bright orange red, and then it touched the, the blue and it neutralized, so. I'm really happy with it. I'm glad I came back and took the leaves off the bottom. I think this is a technique I'm gonna come back to. I like the texture. I hope you enjoy doing this project.